of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Friends, war has driven the demand for anthracite coal to an all-time high. Yes? Anthracite has pitched in to do five big extra wartime heating jobs, of which replacing wood is just one. That's right, friends. Wood, cord wood, was an important peacetime fuel. But suddenly it disappeared. All over rural America, wood piles vanished. The cutters were off to war, or to work in war plants in the city. 544,000 homes faced bitter cold weather without fuel unless anthracite was immediately supplied. But you can bet it was supplied, friends. And not just to meet this missing wood emergency, but to meet other wartime demands, too. To fill Uncle Sam's huge new military coal bin. To replace oil shipped to Africa. And coke now making steel in Pittsburgh mills. True, to meet these tremendously increased demands you have been limited to 87 and one-half percent of last year's coal. But knowing how vital the coal thus made available is to victory, we know you are accepting this war limitation cheerfully. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Drums of Doom. <laughs> Tom Tom's getting the shivers. The most amazing bit of interpretive dancing I've ever seen. A high spot on Louise Lanala's career, all right. This is the Macombo number, isn't it, Lamont? Yes, uh, based on a native sacrificial dance at Haiti. According to the program, no, no white man's ever seen it before. Look, Lamont. Hmm? She's actually frozen in the middle of the stage. Staring up as though she were hypnotized. <laughs> Heaven, Heaven. Something's wrong, Lamont. The curtain's coming down. Yes, I wonder what it... Well, Lamont, what could have happened? Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to announce that due to a sudden indisposition, Miss Ronaldo will be unable to continue her performance. Oh, what a hit here. Yes, I'm Miss Lane. What? You're Louise Ronaldo, the dancer. Yes. They told me I might find Mr. Cranston here. It is terribly important that I see him. Oh, well, I'm expecting him shortly. Won't you come in? Thank you. Why, that was a brilliant performance you gave last night. I hope your sudden illness was not any serious. Uh, illness? They said on unfortunate interruption in your performance last night. Well, yes. Yes, it was most unfortunate. In the midst of life, there is always death. What? Oh, there is nothing. An old proverb. Oh, oh that's probably Mr. Cranston now. Excuse. Will you excuse me? Of course, Miss Lane. Hello, Margot. Come on. Louise Ronaldo, the dancer, is here to see you. She wants me? Yes, and she's been terribly frightened about something. Well, let's go and find out what this is all about. Hello, Miss Ronaldo. Miss Lane tells me you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, Mr. Cranston. It is very important. 
Could I speak to you alone? You can speak freely in front of Miss Lane. Oh, very well. I... I wanted to show you this. I know you have made a study of these things, Mr. Cranston, and I hope you would be able to help me. Where did you get this? I... I found it in my dressing room last night. And then, during the performance, I happened to look up in the scenery loft. A larger one hung up there, suspended in midair, like an omen of the devil. And that's when I screamed. Oh, Mr. Cranston, you've got to help me. I'm in terrible danger. Why, it's just a piece of black satin cut out in the shape of a little hand. Do you have a scissors, Margot? Wait, yes. Just a minute. Oh, Mr. Cranston, I don't know what to do. They are after me. Come now, Miss Ronaldo. You've got to pull yourself together. Oh, thanks, Margot. I will cut open this hand. (laughs) Just as I thought. A bone and dust inside. I'm afraid I don't follow all that. What is this queer-looking black hand? Margot, it's a symbol of something that reaches into the heart of our most civilized places. In the black jungles of Haiti. Sounds menacing. It is. This little black hand is a voodoo. Voodoo? Yes, Margot, the black magic of Haiti. This little black hand is the calling card of the voodoo. Whoever receives it is marked for death. Ronaldo found the black hand right on this dressing room table, didn't she? Yes, Margot, and I... Shh, quiet. Oh, I didn't know Mrs. Ronaldo had been to Well, she asked us to wait in her dressing room until the performance was over. I am Zara, Mrs. Ronaldo. I come to get castanet for her next number. Zara, have you been with Miss Ronaldo long? Six months. I must go. Mrs. Ronaldo waits for castanet. Very talkative, is she? See the look on her face, Margot, when she saw this little black hand? Yes, it was either fear or guilt. Margot, I think we'd better watch the rest of this show from the wings. Come on. Come on, she's giving a magnificent performance. No one in the audience would ever suspect that that poor girl terror stricken. Mr. Cranston. Yes. I'm Ralph Henderson, Miss Ronaldo's manager. Oh, how do you do? This is Miss Lane. How do you do? Louise has told me that you've consented to help her. Frankly, I'm afraid for her. She never was very strong, and this fear that's taken hold of her seems to be undermining her health completely. Mr. Henderson, do you know anything about Miss Ronaldo's maid, Sara? She's a native of Haiti, isn't she? Yeah, she's a strange girl full of native superstitions. Do you have any idea who might have put that voodoo in Miss Ronaldo's dressing room last night? No, I've been trying to figure it out. You see, I know a bit about Haiti and folklore myself. Perhaps Louise may have unwittingly antagonized the natives on a trip to Haiti. Well, the arm of the voodoo is long, Mr. Cranston. You mean Zara? Well, she'd be the most likely suspect, but she seems so devoted to Louise. (laughs) Good heavens, the sandbag's fallen. Get a doctor, quick. Was it Mr. Ronaldo? I can't tell. There's so much confusion out there. Bill, ring down the curtain. How is Louise, Mr. Cranston? She's not injured, Mr. Henderson. She just fainted when the sandbag fell so close to her. She's still unconscious. We'll need some water. Oh, Zara, get some water. Oh, yes, Mr. Henderson. That other dancing girl was killed, wasn't she, Lamont? Yes, it was a terrible death. Oh, sir. Uh, I think she's coming out of it. Uh, it's the water, Miss. Oh, thanks, Dora. Uh, Here, Miss Ronaldo. Try to swallow a little of this. <laughs> there. That's fine. Drum. The drum. What is she talking about? Shh. I want to hear what she's saying. Gray. Tombstone. Gray. It is. It is them. It is them. Papa Luba. Uh. What are you gibbering about? Listen to the drum. A voice. It is zombie. A voice of walking dead. Zombie. Yes. It is zombie. Mr. Nelda needs quiet. Come on, taking Zara outside. Oh, oh, all right. Zombie. Come on, Zara. Zombie. Zombie. I 
wanted to get them out of here, Margot. I think this may be a chance to find out some things we want to know. The she seems to be in a trap. Yes, I know. It'll help. What are you going to do? I'm going to try hypnotism. Louise. Louise Ronaldo, listen to me. You're going to tell me everything. Everything that has frightened you from the beginning. Yes, from the beginning. It began in Haiti. We were walking through the woods one day. This Haitian countryside is beautiful. <laughs> it has been fun exploring it, but it's getting dark, Louise. I think we ought to be starting back. Oh, Ralph, mm. look over there. Those tombstones. Why, it is a native burial ground. Uh, Louise, come back here. Oh, Ralph, come and look at the exquisite trinkets on these graves. Don't touch them, Louise. Those ornaments are put on the graves by the natives to ward off evil spirits. The natives are very superstitious. And... Listen. Tom-toms in the hills. Oh, oh, it is just a ceremonial dance, Ralph. Oh, look. Here's a curious-looking bracelet on this headstone here. Hey. Why, that must be centuries old. A relic of the old slave trading days. I want it. No, Louise. I'd stir up trouble with the natives. I don't care. I want it for my collection. And I'm going to take it. Louise. We'd better get out of here quick. There's someone watching us from behind that tombstone. <laughs> oh, Ralph, there is no one behind that tombstone, only under it. And he will never need the bracelet. <laughs> that was the beginning. From the moment I took that bracelet from the grave, I had no peace. I did not sleep. And always I hear the tom-toms throbbing. It almost drives me mad. Finally, my husband suggests we cut our visit short and return to the States. Her husband? I didn't know she was married. Shh, Your husband? Yes. Ralph Henderson. Ralph Henderson? Why, that's her manager. Shh, let her go on, Margo. The trip back was uneventful. The symptoms disappeared. I thought I was cured. After we got here, I began rehearsing for my recital. And then it started again. What started again? Visions. Visions in the night. I would wake and see a figure standing by my bed, pointing at me. And then the drums would begin. <laughs> She's coming out of the crowd, Mama. Where am I? Oh, Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane. You're telling us a very interesting story, Miss Ronaldo. What did I say? A good deal. Why were you keeping your marriage to Ralph Henderson a secret? Oh, did I tell you that? He thought it would interfere with my career if it were known. Please, do not let him know I told you. No, we'll keep your secret. One more question, Miss Ronaldo. Yes. That slave bracelet you took from the grave... You have it with you? No. No, it has been missing for several days now. Well, could you describe it to me? I have a picture of it here in my bag. Good. I was going to sell the bracelet to a dealer. I had it photographed so he could distribute copies among his clients. Oh, here's the picture. Thank you. Very unusual looking. Shouldn't be hard to identify. Come on, do you think it's all? Later, Mother. Well, Miss Ronaldo, I think you'll be all right for tonight. Miss Lane and I have to be running along now. Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston, I'm over here. Oh, there's Shrevey's cab, Lamont. Hey, where have you two been? You said I should meet you here after the show, you said. It's been over for hours. Get in, Margo. I'm sorry, Shrevey. We had a little business backstage. Hope you didn't mind waiting. No, I didn't mind. I didn't. I had the meter running the whole time. <laughs> You know, Lamont, I'd say that Zara is the most likely suspect. Maybe one of her ancestors was buried in that no, grave. No, Margot, I've got a hunch there's something more diabolic than that behind this case. You see, Margot, that sandbag didn't fall by accident. The rope holding it was cut. 
You mean that someone meant to kill Louise Rinaldo tonight? I'm not sure, Margot. Anyone might have been under that sandbag when it fell, and the person who cut the rope knew that. But I don't understand. That doesn't make much sense, does it? Lamont, what about that bracelet? If we could find out who stole it. Yes, Margot, I'm thinking about that. Maybe we'll locate that bracelet through Doc Bronson. Doc Bronson? Who's he? Someone in the shadow sent to jail some years ago. He's a dealer in all sorts of strange curios, charms, bracelets, amulets, mostly stolen. If that bracelet was stolen from Miss Ronaldo, the chances are sooner or later it'll find its way to Doc's place. And you think... I think it's about time the shadow renewed Doc's acquaintance. There's no one here. I could have sworn I heard the door open. <laughs> Who's that? You've forgotten your old friend, Doc? That voice. It's the Shadow. So you do remember me. What do you want with me this time, Shadow? I ain't done nothing. The little black hand I've just thrown on the counter. Do you recognize it? No. I never saw it before. Haven't you, Doc? What about that bracelet you're fingering so nervously? Where did you get it? <sighs> A friend gave it to me. That bracelet was stolen from Louise Ronaldo, the dancer. It's a collector's item worth a fortune. Worth even murder. I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying, Doc. I remember receiving stolen goods is one thing, murder is another. Wait, I ain't mixed up with no murder shot. Where did you get that bracelet? All right, I'll tell you. Nobody's going to pin a murder rap on me. Some customer gave it to me as, as payment for a job I done. What job? That little black hand. This customer asked me to make him another one just like the one I I made for Gloria Nelson. Gloria Nelson? Gloria Nelson died under mysterious circumstances a few years ago. Or maybe she was murdered, Doc. Honest, I had nothing to do with it. All I did was... Where'd you make those voodoo's, Doc? It was... March winds roaring around and over your home as they do, friends, have an effect on firing your furnace you don't want to overlook. Yes, high winds inevitably increase the pull of the draft in your chimney and accelerate the rate at which your fire burns. What can you do? Well, close the turn damper as far as possible, for one thing. But the best thing to do is install an automatic heat regulator now. Do it now for two reasons. First, to save precious coal. At this season particularly, hand control of furnace dampers is inefficient and wasteful. Trying to keep up with changes in wind velocity makes correct hand regulation practically impossible. So install a heat regulator and let it control those dampers for you efficiently, automatically. Your regulator will keep the temperature in your home right on the beam without any attention from you and protect your family from spring colds due to uneven heating. And remember... Heat regulators are quickly available now. They may not be next fall. So be safe, friends. Call your dealer and order your automatic heat regulator tomorrow. And now, back to the shadow. Commissioner Weston will see you now, Mr. Cranston. Oh, thanks, officer. Well, hello, Mr. Cranston. Oh, Mr. Henderson. Were you just in talking to the commissioner? Yes, that unfortunate accident at the theater. Police have been conducting an inquiry. Oh, is that so? I hope uh, you're not one of the suspects. <laughs> no, I'm afraid my visit here is purely social. The commissioner's a good friend of mine. Well, how is Miss Ronaldo? Well, Mr. Cranston, I'm afraid her health won't stand up under the strain. Her heart isn't too strong. Why don't you get her to go away for a while? I suggested that, but she won't hear of it. Well, I've got to get back to the matinee. Goodbye, Mr. Cranston. Goodbye, Mr. Henderson. Oh. Oh, hello, Cranston. What's on your mind? Hello, Commissioner. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Yeah, uh, what is it? Remember the Nelson case about uh, two years ago, I think it was? Nelson? You mean Gloria Nelson, the heiress? That's right. That's... The heiress? That's right. That's one I won't forget. She was found dead in her home. Someone in the department got the bright idea it was murder. We investigated thoroughly, and there wasn't anything to that theory. 
Gloria Nelson died of a heart attack. She was... How about, uh, what's that favor you were going to ask? Well, I'd like the name of Gloria Nelson's nearest living relative. You probably have it in the files. What's on your mind, Cranston? You haven't found out anything, have you? Oh, come, Commissioner. You know I have no interest in crime. Uh. Pardon me, Commissioner. I just got this report from the 9th Precinct. Old Doc Bronson's been found dead in his curio shop. Doc Bronson, huh? Looks like the underworld is settling accounts again. Well, I think I'd better go down and have a look myself. Oh, but Commissioner... Huh? The file on Gloria Nelson, really. Now, Cranston, you can't have it. It's against regulations. Yeah, uh, you'll find it in that first filing cabinet. <laughs> Good old Weston. Lamont, we've got to do something. Louise Ronaldo just about got through a performance tonight. I never saw anyone so frightened. Yes, I know, Margot. Lamont. Hmm? My door. It's open. Margot, wait out here. Be careful, Lamont. <laughs> no one here. It's all right. Come in, Margot. Well, now, what do you suppose? I'm sure I locked the Look, door. Look, Margot, on that chair. What is it? A little black satin doll with a dagger through its heart. What does it mean? Another sign of the voodoo, Margot. It means someone's going to die tonight. Oh, Lamont. Now, we've got to act fast. Go over to Louise Ronaldo's apartment. Don't alarm her, but get her out of there somehow. I've got a hunch we'll find the answer to some of our questions tonight in Louise Ronaldo's apartment. Good. Mother got my way. I'll take this lock. Someone's opening the door. Oh, oh help. help me. Donna, what happened? You're hurt. No. No, Miss Cranston. Hurry. Miss Ronaldo. Miss Lane in danger. Theater. Hurry. Louise. I don't think we should have come. But you heard the voice on the phone. It said I must come here to the theater at once if I wanted to end this horror. I'd like to know who made that call. There's nothing so menacing as a dark, empty theater. If only we could put on a few lights. No, no, no. Well, the voice said, in darkness the terror came. In darkness it must go. It said we must find the center of the stage and wait there. I don't like this. Suppose it's a trap for me. I think we ought to leave it once. The drums are back in my head again. They are following me. Too. Louise, we're getting off the stage right now. The light. Someone has turned his spotlight on us. Who? Who are you? You die here tonight. That voice seems to be coming from up in the scenery loft. I can't see the spotlight blinding me. Shadow, I will. Why don't you come up and get me? She lied. Gloria's death was due to natural causes. The police said so. No, no, it's not true. Do you know? 
go to my quiet. You won't be a shadow when I get the spotlight focused on you. There. I've got the spotlight on. I'll just swing this beam around until I can see you. Then you'll be a perfect target for my knife. I, I hear you coming, but I, I can't see you. The light's right on you. But I can't see you. I can't see you. I can't see. Voodoo! Voodoo! But Lamont, I still don't understand what made him do it. And you see, Margot Henderson, alias Nelson, was a psychological murderer. Took fiendish delight in literally frightening his victims to death. Oh, how hard. His plan was to marry into a wealthy family, get his wife to sign over her interests to him, and then proceed to terrorize her. But where does the voodoo come into it? When he and Louise took that trip to Haiti, it gave him an idea how to get rid of her. And when she took the amulet from the grave, she was playing right into his hands. You mean he used her own conscience to frighten her? Yes. Together with a recording of Tom Toms, the witch doctor's costume, those voodoos he got from the dock. Henderson had Doc killed to seal his lips, just as he killed Zara when she refused to assist him further in his plans. Oh. Then Zara was in the scheme, too. Yes. She confessed just before she died. But, Lamont, where does that falling sandbag fit into the picture? All part of Henderson's campaign of fear, Margot. Oh, I see. You know, you never did tell me what happened up there in the scenery loft with Henderson and the shadow. Well, naturally, Henderson couldn't see the shadow coming. He must have fallen the victim of his own power of suggestion. Thought the shadow was some kind of black magic that had finally caught up with him. And as a result, he jumped to his death from the catwalk. And now, friends, let me introduce Blue Coal's distinguished heating expert, John Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Or perhaps I should say good afternoon with the days so much longer. Spring is here, or will be shortly. And spring brings with it special conditions to keep in mind in heating your home. First, as we've noted, the day is longer. And the sun's rays are daily gaining in strength, too. So what you want to be sure to do is get all the good you can out of those solar rays. Let the sun help heat your home. Keep the shades up. Allow it to shine in all you can. That'll help quite a lot. You'll be surprised how much. Now, another thing is the problem of high winds. Watch out for them. They create a stronger draft in your chimney, cause your fire to burn too fast and overheat your home. Offset high winds by closing the turn damper of your furnace just as far as you can. And I'd like to repeat an earlier warning about carrying a deep fire even in mild weather. Remember, another little trick of spring weather is the sudden drop in temperature. So for best results, even in mild weather, keep a deep fire. Then you're always prepared. I thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This is Ken Roberts saying keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This story produced by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of... Blue Coal.